but so anyway, so. Um, so do you want to go back to introductions and we can. Right, we'll go back to introductions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start, welcome everyone. Go for welcome. it. <laughs> welcome to Studio 176. We lost Tiffany on the, on the road back here, but. So up, uh, well, I'm not sure how it looks on your screen, but anyway, we have Laura Grismore from Studio 176. We have uh, Jeremy Simonson from Studio Hi. 176. We have uh, Tiffany Bessonen traveling back to the area from Studio 176. Myself, I'm Don Rossback, also a co-owner of the Studio 176. And we have Jill and Dean Johnson joining us and Tammy Nara joining us. Uh, Tammy was last month's featured artist. Dean will be next month's featured artist. And Vicki Bender, our guest for the evening, is August featured artist for Studio 176. So welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and uh, we will just give a little bit of an introduction about Vicki who started her art career at a very early age in uh, North Dakota. I believe in North Dakota, right? That's your starting point? Right. Okay. And so um, she was interested in art, like I said, from a very early age. And then she went into teaching art and also music, both in uh, Bismarck and Fargo. And then uh, while in Fargo, she started uh, working with the Creative Arts Studio uh, that went into schools and then kind of continued that with artists and residencies. Um, and then from there, she also became a member of the Gallery 4. Um, was that a co-op gallery? Yeah. Okay. And that's been in Fargo for 45 years, a long-standing entity there. And then um, eventually she came to the Park Rapids area. And that's where we were going to start talking about um, her career there and starting the blank canvas gallery as one of the co-founders and I don't remember exactly what we we're going to talk about because then our technical difficulties started but <laughs> so so why don't you tell us a little bit about that Vicki um just kind of how the blank canvas got started where it's at uh right now and well uh, blank canvas got started because uh, a gentleman had asked me and said uh would you consider starting a gallery? And I thought, well, um, <laughs> at that time, uh, I thought, why not? I'd rather try something and uh, not succeed and, and ha not having tried it at all. Anyway, I asked several artist friends if they were interested and we worked, um, there were about eight of us that uh, worked together to formulate the, uh, the business itself. Uh, we were fortunate to have a CPA on board uh, and, uh, and writers and you know a lot of different people who were really instrumental in making it happen. We worked for a whole year before we opened the doors. Oh, wow. And uh, I, we wanted to be, uh, we wanted to get on the ground running and, and know that we were doing the, the right way. Um, <clears throat> we were very successful for the four years that we were in business. Um, it, it just happened that a numerous artists that were members were people who left the area in the winter time. So it was very difficult to keep it open year round. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, at that time, anyway, what, what we did do was we established a fine art gallery. And that was our purpose and we were successful in doing so. And I, I, we were very well supported. It was really a nice place. People would come in and they say, we look forward to seeing new shows. We would invite artists as, as guests like you are doing. Uh, so it made it, Interesting, we had openings, um, we had wine and uh, goodies. <laughs> well, I hope you have wine and goodies at your home there tonight, so. for you. Uh, I was too hot to, to bust out a bottle. Water. I've got water going tonight. But, and of um, course, we had, well, Don and uh, Tiffany 
we had you as guest artists. Right, once. right. I remember that. Yeah. It was really fun. And Dean and Jill were very good supporters of our business, too. So, you know, you kind of mentioned about, like, the CPA in there and um, uh, oh, writers, but they were all visual artists, too? You, they just happened to be writers and a... We had, we had people who were jewelry makers, um, you know, a pottery, uh, okay. we had a, a variety of things, yes, photography. Uh, it covered quite a gamut, mm -hmm. but it was, it was interesting having guests because that brought people in, you know, to see the guest artists work. Yeah. And, and we had people who, who would uh, approach us about being guests too, which was- Oh, okay. Yeah, interesting enough in talking about uh, bringing people in, um, your sister came into the gallery today and your granddaughter who was in that one piece was in the gallery today too, so. Oh. So yeah, that was pretty fun talking with them for a short about, amount of time. Um, so now was the building sold then and then that's why? Yes, yes. Okay. The, um, yeah. the restaurant rec next door to us wanted that space. And so, and the, so the, it, it was one big building that had been divided. And so uh, they, they purchased the whole building eventually. Now I know you guys were planning on kind of doing a show um, yes. this, and then the COVID of course kind of interrupted that, correct? And we'd like very much to do it next year. Okay. So, were you going to, were you going to have that at that? Where were you going to do, help hold that? At the armory. Okay, that's what that I was thinking, you know. And so that kind of brings me into something I didn't really want to ask you about. Um, so like in your, when we were interviewing you and Jeremy and I were, were there in the gallery with you and, and you had talked about um, how COVID had kind of, you know, really put you on hold as far as your artwork. And, um, and Jeremy kind of, you know, echoed that kind of same same idea, and I was thinking about that. I was wondering if you thought about that since you talked about it and just kind of that phenomenon that's happening, you know, where some people seem to have, you know, taken up little hobbies and stuff, but other people seem to be kind of, um, you know, kind of just pushed back from it, you know, and kind of like redirecting themselves in ways that maybe are not as creative as they're used to. So I just kind of wonder if you thought about that anymore. Uh, well, I found that um, it was difficult to decide on what to work on. So what I found myself doing was some small things. And interestingly enough, I, I, I did mat up those pieces and I had them framed and I thought, well, we would use this for the show. And as it turns out, there are only two really new pieces that I have done this past winter uh, in the show. And that's the two watercolors that are on the tables. Those oh, are, okay. Uh, and those are uh, an experiment for me. Um, there's a way of putting color on paper, watercolor paper and letting it run a little bit and then taking saran wrap and crunching it up and laying it down on there and letting it dry. And then I took it off and, and decide what you're seeing, if you can create anything from it. And it was, that was fun. So that made me experiment a little bit more. And then I had uh, a couple of photographs that um, I found very intriguing. They had been by, done by somebody else, but I asked uh, permission to do a painting from the, the person who had taken the photograph, because I don't think it's right to oh, right. plagiarize something that's somebody else's. Of course, unless the person is no longer living and you can't ask them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I had fun with one piece, and actually somebody purchased it, but it was um, Half Moon Bay in uh, California, out of San Francisco. And it's water, and it was very dark, it, but you could see lights along a street. It was like a streak of lights. Well, it was a train. 
that was going along the, the waterway. And it was really, really fun. I'd like to try even making a bigger piece. This, this one I did was quite small, but uh, I think it would be rather interesting to try that in watercolor. But as you said, um, I, I just found myself probably listening to, to too much news, too addictive. Oh. And yeah, that, that, uh, depressing. that, that really <laughs> daunted me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I learned to kind of filter a lot of that out of the way and um, now, but for a while there, it was, it, it was tough. It was tough. So not that it's not necessarily, but I did try uh, doing the Facebook Live again here, but it's still giving me errors. So, um, so we're just going to be recording it and you know, looking from there. So, um, if you if to our other guests here that are on Zoom, Natalie and Frank and Tammy, if you have questions about um, Vicky's uh, work at all or anything as an artist, feel free to either unmute yourself and just chime in. Um, what I thought maybe we'd do is I'll share my screen and we'll show some of Vicki's works. And then if you want to talk about any of these pieces or if people have questions about them, uh, how does that sound? You want to go that route for a minute? Sure. That's fine. All right. Okay. So I'll share my, let me get this up here again. And, oh my goodness, I lost my window. Let's see everybody. I'm sure the professional people know how to do this better. Okay. So everybody can see that? Nobody can see it? Yep. Yes, we, yep, oh, we can okay. see it. Okay, good. <laughs> Vicki, where was one of your favorite places? Um, that you have been that was really inspiring to you when you were there for artwork? Uh, well, we've taken several trips and I guess uh, one, of the, one of the trips that I was on was to Bosnia and there are a number of paintings in, in, the, in uh, the gallery right now that are from that area. I was so impressed with the scenery, um, the people. It just was very interesting. And also, uh, we took a trip to Norway um, several years ago. My sisters and our husbands all went. And there's some beautiful places there. And I, so I took lots of pictures. I still have pictures, probably, that I'll uh, create use, using that as a background or, you know, go with it. Is that part of your process where you take a picture and then paint from that or? Oftentimes, yes. I'd like to try uh, painting, you know, just directly outside, but I probably use acrylics. I, I haven't used oils for years. Um, they probably work better. And, you know, they, they stay, uh, acrylics dry too quickly when you're outside. Oh. <laughs> but you have to paint fast. <laughs> yes, that's pretty. Oh. oh, that's gorgeous. This is the watercolor, the, the hummingbird. And the next piece is, that's, that's also a watercolor. Yeah. Uh, I haven't grown up in North that's prairie flowers. I've, I, I love the prairie, um, and that was one of the flowers that you would often see growing. Just kind of a whimsical. They almost look like cattails. Yeah, yeah. It's like a prairie coneflower of some sort. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got a really tall seed head. Yes. And they grow wild in many places. <clears throat> So like tall, like in like a, a corn stalk kind of tall? Uh, no, not that tall. Maybe okay. three. Okay. Central North Dakota is more the short grass prairie. So it was like two to four feet rather than six to eight feet. Okay. Well. Love the way you treated the background on the prairie flowers. I, oh. That's just the subtle changes in color. Very nice. <clears throat> 
I agree. And I, I like the color palette too. Um, Sometimes if you limit the colors that you're using, uh, you're, you're much better off in painting. Your painting is more successful. That's true in photography too. I think that's why um, Laura is trying to limit the background color and just really highlight the flower. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like that painting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I thought of that similarity too. Yeah. Oh, this is a dragonfly. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but we have blue, really blue-green dragonflies here. And they're very tiny. But I thought, well, I'd make a big one. <laughs> well, I think there's always something to be said when you push the composition and, you know, you push it off the picture plane like that um, and, you know, just kind of face your viewer or force the viewer into, you know, looking closer at that and the details in there, especially like in the wings. Mm -hmm. I think I used a little bit of gold. Is it, this is acrylic, right? Uh, I believe so. Well, gosh, I, no, it's a watercolor. Oh, it is. Yeah, okay. Right. Believe it or not, it's a watercolor. Cool. Oh, that's not a picky. <laughs> oh, this poem. I did this as a wedding gift for a, <clears throat> a second niece, I guess you'd say. <laughs> her, her mother is our niece, and so that's, that's a relationship. Anyway, she and her husband lived in an apartment across the street from the Los Angeles station. And I thought, what could I do for them that would be different? So I asked for photographs. And this is what, um, this is my rendition of the Los Angeles station. Gotcha. Uh, it looks like a mission. Yeah. Yes, it does. It, it was a mission? Uh, pardon? Well, no. Oh, I, okay. so I think that's just the structure that it was. <laughs> I, of, of the structure. <clears throat> I just used the photograph. <laughs> Got it. And then, and then is that what, is that a large work? That, that's watercolor. Okay. Is it quite large? Um, probably 12 by 14. Okay. It's sendable. You, so well, some of the pieces you had or that you have in the gallery um, are, are quite large, I'd say they're, oh, 20 by 30, maybe even a little bit bigger, those earlier ones of yours. Yes. So do you, do you work that big at all anymore? Uh, not too often. Okay. But, you know, I, I did tell you that those ladies in the man were college, um, from college, but I, that idea they went, I think when I was a senior, uh, and they were done in oil. And I thought, you know, I've never shown them around here. And I was showing other pictures with people. <clears throat> and so uh, in making a decision as to what to hang and with the help of my son, uh, we decided, why not? Let people see some of the funny things you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're funny. I love those pieces, you know, so I think they're fabulous. Um, I don't know if we have, uh, I know we have a, a picture of you standing in front of there, probably on our Facebook, but I don't know if I have any handy because those, those of you who are not familiar with those pieces need to see those. So maybe we can find one and, and share that. Um, Jeremy, are you able to share your screen at all? Is he still on here? Yeah. I'm still here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking that maybe if you can find that and then we can, you know, after we go through the slideshow, um, we can share that. So this piece here. Um, that's an acrylic. That's in <clears throat> Norway. Oh, that's Norway? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's oh. Norway. It was interesting because there'd be, you know, a little jutting out of land and then there would be a series of houses. And I'm sure that they were summer cottages. 
Okay. We were in the end. Hitta? Are they Hitta? Hitta. Pardon? They call them Hitta. H Y T T A. Hitta. Okay. They can be really tiny. Yeah. Oh, really? They look they look like they're huge. Uh, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Those they, look big. You know, they were two story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice piece. Thank you. Where are they, Vicki? What part of Norway? Uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> oh, well, somewhere in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, we took the Hürtegruten along the, uh, the, the shore, you know, all the way up to just about to Russia. Um, oh, oh, wow. At that time. And so every once in a while, you know, there'd be a really wonderful scene to take a snapshot of and I there's another one that shows the fish drying which I I should pull up and, and do too sometime that was interesting <clears throat> what I like about this one is it's got that that atmospheric perspective in there you know that's so so deep and in, in the haze and the very very far uh, background of this um, you know you just you can feel that air Thank you. I I worked on that background because I, I do it and then I step away and come back a day or two later and think, oh no, it's not right yet. <laughs> and I paint over it. <laughs> so there's a few layers of paint on that piece. And I did sell it. To oh, you did? Okay. So it lives elsewhere now. Yes. Um, this one, this next one here, I love. Mm. Yeah. Uh, our way to the fog was so ethereal it was it was just beautiful and i i thought well maybe once i would accomplish doing fogs i need to try it again yeah and then, i imagine in watercolor that was really challenging well if you you know you can lift Lift out too. <laughs> Kle Kleenex and paper towel are pretty handy to have on hand. Maybe this is why I don't do watercolor because I end up with holes in my paper instead of. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to use good watercolor paper. That helps. Yeah, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a lovely piece. Oh, it's really you. lovely. Was, now, how large was this one? Uh, oh, probably 16 to 20. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's kind of simplified. It's, it's just got those few elements that work together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to walk away and don't come back with another brush. <laughs> Yeah, I think you did stop just at the right time. That mm -hmm. one. That's it's just yeah, it, it it all works together so well. Balance of values and yeah, lo it's lovely. Where where is do you still have this piece, Vicky? Or I I sold that. Um I think I sold it at the gallery. Okay. Blank canvas, yeah. And this piece, this is where I grew up on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> oh, wow. That's in the New Dakota. Um, uh, the uh, train came right on, along. On the box or in the oh, building. What's it say there, Vicki? It says Medbury. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Medbury? Medbury, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, not Mayberry, but Medbury. Um, that was the uh, drop off for the mail. Okay. And, and we lived, but the elevators were run. My father was a grain elevator manager. And so our house was this side of, of the largest elevator. I, did, I don't have a picture of the, uh, of the house we, I grew up in. That's probably something I should paint sometime too. Um, but uh, the snow fence is there on the side that was put up every year to keep the snow from getting too deep on the tracks. And 
Uh, it just holds a lot of memories. I bet. I bet. Mm -hmm. I still have that painting. That's okay. Now these here, I just, I'm so fascinated with. Uh, this is a commission and this is quite large. I, in fact, I had to go to Minneapolis to buy a piece of watercolor paper big enough for the background. I think it was 64 inches or so. It's, it's about um, probably 48 by, um, oh, I can't. I can't recall offhand, but it's a, a nice large piece. And it is all a home on Big Sand Lake. Okay. And I was commissioned to do it. It took me a oh. couple of years to you know which one that is. You know which one it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to decide how to do it. And uh, I was I was given a pretty free reign as to how um, I could interpret it. So what I did was um, I, I drew it all, all with on graph paper so I would get the dimensions correctly. I took lots of pictures too. And because there were so many windows, I had to decide uh, how to do those. So what I did was I made a small painting ahead of time of reflections. And then I, I cut, I did a lot of cutting and gluing to make all of those things in, in straight, you know, the dimensions for the, the windows and, and, uh, and then I used um, branches from, from a birch tree in the background because they had trees. I didn't want to show it as, uh, you know, in the green trees the summer, but I wanted it to stay cool, the whole thing. <clears throat> Initially, the background, I thought, oh, well, how am I going to do this? And one of my sisters, who, is in, who does artwork, too, said, well, Vicki, why don't, why don't you use watercolor paper and, you know, paint, paint the sky and, and the front? So I did. And then in the lower, what would be right-hand corner, they have some um, long, nice tall grasses that grow there. So I actually picked grass and dried it and, and then uh, sprayed it. And so there's real grass on that picture. It doesn't show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're, you're, so is this um, like, oh shoot, uh, more watercolor paper than two, these pieces? No, or? That, that's actually probably mat board. Okay. And then, so then these the windows then are water, watercolor, individual watercolor painting, so to speak. Yeah, in the, the windows, yeah. Yeah. I did, I did one series and then I made sure I inserted them in back. Okay. And with all the cutouts, I had it uh, in front of it. Thank wow. you. I love the way the trees and the grasses reflect the modern design. They just complement that perfectly. You know, a bunch of pine trees just wouldn't have been right, but the way it is, is just perfect. Yeah, that spear yeah. design. Yeah. yeah, it's quite stark, but I, um, they were pleased with the pictures. So oh, I can imagine. <laughs> and the windows are interesting because they could be reflections, but really when you look at it, they look transparent. Looks like you're looking right through the house. I know, Back but on. there were reflections too. So I, I didn't want to put anything showing in <clears throat> There's a piano in there, and there's a table and chairs and things, but I, I didn't want to do that. So mm -hmm. yeah. it took a while to do it. I bet. <laughs> I bet. So this next piece, I'm going to actually present this full screen here because this has got to be the sister building to the Namath Art Center. No, I, I looked that up. Did you? Yes, and the architect who, uh, it, he was, they didn't give a special name to this person because they said it was an architect firm that had done, and they did about 19 courthouses in North Dakota. Okay. Oh. And so uh, 
And yeah, this is quite a common tile structure. And the Dickey reason County. Oh. Dickey County Courthouse, yes. Uh, I, again, this is mat board, um, lots of cutouts, lots of drawing with colored pencil, pencil to create all of the bricks around that book. Oh, wow. Um, you it, it was a challenge. And the reason I did it because the city of Allendale was having a 125th anniversary. And there are a number of buildings that are still standing that are originals. And maybe, yeah, maybe they, they weren't exactly 125 years old, but just, just really close to it. So I did this, I did a bank building, I did a, a building that had been a dental office. I did a restaurant, a hotel that sadly was torn down a year or two ago because mm -hmm. it was great it was in need of great repair and nobody wanted to put money into it <clears throat> and then there is uh, the opera house which is 100 feet by 80 feet wide and that um one of my classmates bought that piece from me for uh, just so it stays in Allendale. Oh, okay. And the this courthouse picture is also in the Allendale in the courthouse because, oh. fortunately for me, one of my sisters bought it and gave it as a gift to the courthouse, so it's hanging there. And the little bit of paper that's in front—that's handmade paper that okay. I just to give it something to sit on. <clears throat> This yeah. was great fun to do. How long did it take you to do that one? Oh gosh, I don't know. I did. I didn't keep, keep track. Yeah. Of yeah. Sometimes you just keep going and going and going. So, yeah. so you did all those other buildings that you mentioned. You did the same kind of a thing, and were they all the same yeah. size? So, and that was all for. So it sounds like you did like four or five, six different artworks for this for the city of Ellendale then. Right. And, and then they're on display uh, when they have the reunion. Wow, it's, it's really beautiful. How did and you I just, get into doing this kind of artwork? Um, or like, why did it, why, or how? How did you get into it or? I like architecture. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, how can I create the illusion of some dimension? Um, so that's why that's why I've done it, but I haven't. I thought about doing the um, the old courthouse here. I haven't done it yet, so we'll see here in, in Park Rapids. Well, you pretty much got it down with this one, you know, because I could have swore it was. Because I know when the Namath was looking um, at the arch the the plans and stuff, there was a sister building in somewhere in North Dakota. I I offhand I don't remember the the town, but to find out where that is yeah so i was just reading about forbes north dakota which is close to ellendale and we're all the kids now from forbes go to school in ellendale yes yeah yeah so. that's not too far away yeah. yeah so then are all three of these kind of the same media uh there's handmade paper in the background and found materials, and the birds are made out of leather. Okay. Out of leather. Wow. Ooh, and I paint on them um, <clears throat> dimension. I'm going to go a little bit bigger again and see if we can see a little closer there. So. Now these, I didn't put any feet on them, but some of them are, have feet that are made out of fine wire. That I twist. <laughs> I didn't notice that they didn't have feet. I just <laughs> you assume they're sitting on those right? somehow. <clears throat> they're yeah. sitting on their feet to keep them warm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there is the one. Um, yeah. yeah, there you can see the feet. <laughs> those crusted gross feet. Uh, yeah. And these, I, I get. I've probably done over seventy. <clears throat> oh wow! Bird pictures. 
And I do um, have pictures made up for cards, for greeting cards. Mm -hmm. And so I market those. And then there's the eagle one too. Oh yeah. There. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, you can see the little wires there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Others. So oh, cool. Yeah, very cool. So is that real time? <laughs> I'm sorry, but there are some really good plastic pine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how are you keeping that green, Vicky? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're in color right now. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let people have a chance to ask any questions about the slideshow. Otherwise, I'll hit back onto the the actual Zoom where the group is. So, if you have any questions, you can certainly um, pop in. We don't have that big of a group, so feel free to unmute yourself. But Vicky, um, can I ask you one thing about these? beautiful boats that I bought from you. Where were they taken? Oh, you that know? was that was in Bosnia. I okay, I thought so. Yeah. They were yeah. from Bosnia. Okay. In fact, that yeah. could have been Croatia. Croatia. And I I've, I've done a couple of paintings using those boats because they were so intriguing. Yeah, I just love them. Okay. Oh. <laughs> How nice. I have enjoyed, we've enjoyed them a lot, hanging in our homes. Let me see. So what do you think, um, you know, I mean, you've done so many different medias, almost, you know, different subjects, but you kind of, you know, I mean, you seem to have a, you know, a little bit of nature and then obviously some of the places you travel to. Do you think though anything like in your artistic practice has has like changed dramatically over time or anything um you want to um you, you maybe are trying to aspire to as far as your work goes you know in a direction it's taking um oh it's that's so hard to give an answer to oh okay <laughs> You know, people say, well, uh, why do you paint in watercolor or, or how, how do you decide? Well, the subject matter <clears throat> is generally what determines what, what material I'm going to use. Um, I, I guess, in, you know, because each, each medium works differently like a, acrylic is forgiving because you can go back over it and make corrections. Uh, oils, uh, you can do the same thing. Although I really haven't painted in oil since oh, quite a few years ago. Uh, they, they take so long to dry. I don't know, Has any have any of you tried uh, oils that are water soluble? I understand. Oh uh, no, I I I did a little bit when they first came out, and I didn't like them, you know. But um, that class that I just took the the instructor, I mean, we just painted super super thin. So I just finished up that painting just the other day of that that woman I'm working on. Yes, I, like I put varnish on it yesterday. Oh, good. So. Yeah, I was because I thought the same thing about oils, but if you paint really thin, it it dries. That that's the way I painted in in college, because I couldn't afford to buy more oils. <laughs> a lot do you, of time. Do you paint time. outside, or do you tend to paint in a studio, or what do you prefer? I, I do have a studio, uh, which is very. Very, very nice. I'm very fortunate because when we moved here, my husband said, well, <clears throat> if I build a, a double garage and put a studio on top, will you move from Fargo to Park Rapids? And I said, I surely will. <laughs> oh, 
I, I had had a studio in the basement that was in the farthest corner that you could put me. Oh. Dark and you know I'd end up carrying all my supplies upstairs to the dining room table, and then you'd have to clean everything off. And you know, anyway. Yeah, space I, I feel, is important. I feel so blessed to have that place because it. I can go there, and I can. I can leave everything there and walk out and it's still there when I come back, <laughs> which is very helpful. Right. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, do you have a favorite artwork? A favorite? Yeah. Oh. Well, I have a piece in the show right now that I, I put a higher price on because I thought if somebody likes it well enough, I'll part with it. But it's it's the Turkish rug market. Oh yeah, that is a nice piece. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was that's in Sarajevo. And that's a four hundred year old area in Sarajevo. They still have it, it's so intriguing to go to see all of the markets, all the things that are sold there. But that one walkway with all of these rugs hanging <clears throat> along the side, and it was really, it intrigued me because of the patterns and the colors and, and thinking I'm walking on these old, old stones that have been here for many, many years. Yeah. Yeah, that uh one. You did, you did quite a bit of traveling now. Was this like after your, um, you know, careers of teaching, obviously, maybe? I, so when did you do a lot of your traveling? I would say in the last, you know, 20 years, we've been able to travel more since both of us retired. Okay. Okay, nice. but I, I don't feel retired, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, I was curious, you know, I mean, the places you talked about, Budapest and Bosnia and Sarajevo, you know, I mean, you know, most people are looking at like Hawaii, the Caribbean, Mexico. So I'm just kind of curious about your choices for those travels. Bosnia happened because I became friends with a family who had immigrated to Fargo. <clears throat> and I was doing... Uh, an ESL program, an evening program, whereby uh, the, the parents and the children would come and the parents would be going to other um, classes that for introduction into coming to the United States. And then we would work with the children and we would often have a potluck. And this one evening, uh, after the potluck, I had uh, I noticed there were two young women sitting off to the side, and I thought, I'm not going to talk to my friends. I'm going to go over and visit with these two people. And one one gal uh, who was from Croatia spoke very good English and plus other languages, so she's an was an interpreter. And the the gal um, Nedija. Uh, who, who had come, actually she had come from Germany uh, to, to the United States. She came through Lutheran Social Services and she's my daughter's age. Anyway, um, I started talking to them and, uh, and oh, with, after the conversation concluded that evening, um, I thought, well, oh, I wish I had taken down her phone number because <clears throat> she, she and her son had come. Anyway, as it turns out, our paths crossed again, and we have been friends ever since. And she, um, I have contact with her numerous times uh, when, whenever, and anyway, she asked me, she said when she was going back to Bosnia to visit her family, she said, and she called me Becky. <laughs> and she said, I want you to go with me. And I said, you want someone your mom's age to go with you back home? And she said, yes. And so I jumped at the chance. And I'll tell you what, 
I couldn't have had a more wonderful time. Uh, all of her relatives treated me like royalty. I was fed the best food, um, treated so well. And we went so many different places. Uh, I, and, you know, sometimes if you extend yourself and you get to know somebody, it's very worthwhile. Oh, cool. Very cool. Listen, we are at uh, just about a couple minutes left. Um, so I want to give an opportunity for those who are joining us to maybe ask one last question or something before we um, uh, sign off. Um, is there anybody that has a quick question for Vicki? I feel like I've talked an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, you look like you were going to ask a question. Hi, Becky. It's oh, Anna. Anna. Oh, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Don't crash the car. I won't back <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, so Anna has a question. Yeah, I do. I do. This has been fun listening to your commentary. It's been very informative and very interesting. Um, so, Bicky, baby, uh, what <laughs> kind of, as, as, as an as inspired, like, you inspire me as an artist, but as an aspiring artist myself, any, any words of wisdom? Just keep doing what you're doing. I, I, you are a wonderful artist, and I'm so pleased to know you as a young person. I'm pleased to know you, because, like, like less of a question more of a comment like it's i know it's cliche to say but it's in your art so uh, absolutely it's cliche but like it literally like it's like hey look at me <laughs> look at me now <laughs> and and look at me and contemplate me coward and like it's so cool to see that like because you know during critiques in college you always hear that but then and like seeing that being like that eh, doesn't fit that bill entirely but then like seeing something that actually fits the bill is so cool and is so interesting to me and so i just, I just we are we're just getting <laughs> on our driveway right now <laughs> so um but vicky you did a great job great job I love how you're framed by your window there. So um, oh. you're, I'm, I'm going to get rid of our audio though because there's still, you know, dirt roads, how they are. But great job. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> All right, good to see you guys. <laughs> we'll to listen to you talk about it. And we're so thankful you're in our community. Thank you for being oh. a part of our art scene here and contributing so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I, I feel very fortunate to be here. Good. Um, I'm, I'm so excited the, the fact, all the music, all the drama, all of those things that have been a part of my life, I'm able to participate in, and my family, and they love it here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we're very lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. This was really very cool. You have, you have, so many different um, uh, distinct um, uh, things that you've explored. And I find that so interesting. So you explored the architecture and did that so completely and, and well, and then, and the birds, I mean, the, it was, and the watercolors and the acrylics. And so it just seems, so thank you for sharing all that. And, and maybe I missed it, but what's your current um, uh, series? Are you currently working in a series that maybe I missed at the beginning? Uh, not, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, that's the thing I sort of find hard to do is uh, to just pick one area and stick to it. I think that's part of having been a teacher. Mm. You had to, you have to jump from here to here to here, and you wear so many hats. Yeah, it's so very learn. true. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. To... Well, you've been open to whatever presents itself. And Jeremy, I am. I feel very fortunate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 
It says my internet is unstable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that being the thing, and we're just about out of time anyway. Oh, thank wow. you very and much, Vicki. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. For those out there. Thank you, everybody. You, know, you can see her okay. work currently up at the thank Studio 176 in Park Rapids. So um, please stop in. And again, thank you very much. And with that, we'll sign off for the evening. Good night. Thanks thank for you. zooming in, everyone. Thanks so much, Vicki. Thank you, Vicki. Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> it was my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>